<laughs> if you miss, there's a fine. Oh. <laughs> <Not> repeat. No. <laughs> Hi and welcome back to my channel and if it's your first time here my name is Kaiza and thank you for joining us. If you're watching this video and you're from the Great Lakes region of Eastern Africa I'm willing to bet you this dollar that you have this item in your household and you use it on a daily basis. Heck it's on my head right now. I'm of course talking about the kanga or lesso depending on where you're from. And in today's video, we'll be diving into the history of this staple in your wardrobe. For all topics, African fashion and business tips, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you're always in the know whenever we upload a new video every Sunday. The kanga or leso is a colorful fabric similar to kitenge but lighter and worn primarily by women, but sometimes men, in the Great Lakes region of East Africa. And kangas typically come in pairs known as goras. You can either call them gora ya leso or gora ya kang. They're made primarily of cotton fabric, but there are some cheaper synthetic options in the market as well. The kanga has three parts or three characteristics, which are obvious to the eye. There is the border, which is around the cloth, known as the pindo, the center, which is the mji, and the third part is the saying or the msemo in Swahili. The kanga is not a kanga without the saying. So it is a very important characteristic to this cloth that distinguishes it from all the other type of African fabrics that's out there. Without the saying, it is not a kanga. It is less formal compared to the kitenge and this versatile fabric has so many uses ranging from pot holders to baby carriers to skirts and wraps and towels and everything in between. The kanga is culturally significant to the Eastern African coast and is often given as a gift during weddings and special occasions such as childbirth as well as during funerals where people typically can print similar kangas for the family members to wear during their bereavement. For example, when using a funeral, the kanga can have different saying to offer condolence or encouragement to the family of the bereaved and those people who are taking care of the family. And for weddings, you'll find kangas that have romantic words or words of encouragement for the newly wedded couple. Here's another example of kanga usage from my traditional wedding where my husband had to pick me out from a lineup of other female relatives. We understand you have come here to pick a girl. God is so kind, he has given us so many girls. What do you want? Now, can you come up here? And if you miss, excuse me. If you miss, there's a fine. There's no repeat. Then, you are in for it. Not open anywhere, just to look. Just to look. Just to look. Are we allowed to do the height? Do the height. You don't talk to them. Oh, you just pull it down. Okay. Dial her cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Let's go. No fine. No fine. No fine. No <laughs> Kangas can be used to communicate to others messages that are too sensitive to be verbalized. For example, if you are beefing with another woman, you could print on the on your kanga a message that you want to pass across to them without actually having to say anything, which I think it's genius because you can kind of say your piece without studying ish. <laughs> You can kind of say your piece without starting a fight or starting anything. And if somebody interprets it in a different way, you can be, you can say, well, that's on you. I didn't say it to you. You just read it on my kanga. See you, boo. That way you can put your message across without having to say it or without having to be confrontational about it and start something that you don't want to get into. The Kanga tradition is so significant in East Africa that there's a saying that goes manamke hupigwa kwa kanga, which translates to a woman is bitten by a kanga, not literally beating her up with a kanga, but the deeper meaning of this saying is that instead of resolving to violence, you can communicate to the woman um, by using a kanga, by printing on the kanga, the message you want her to get, or finding a kanga with the message that you want to present to her so that she can change her ways. The idea is very progressive, seeing that domestic violence was very prominent back in the day in Africa, and some, to some extent still is today. So this saying, telling people, instead of putting their hands on women, instead go buy them a kanga with a message that you want to pass ac across to them, and they'll, and they'll get it better than you resolving to violence. So how exactly did this cloth become so significant in the East African society and when? The word kanga is a Swahili name for guinea fowl. It is thought that the dots that were common on the earlier versions of the kanga may have influenced the name. And there is a version of the kanga called kisutu that still exhibits this feature. The name Leso is thought to have originated as a result of trade between the Portuguese and the people of East African coast in the form of the small kerchiefs they imported from India and Arabia called the Lenso. The women in Mombasa and Zanzibar sought to make the kerchiefs bigger by sewing them together into larger rectangular cloths in the 3 by 2 formation. It is thought that the first production of the kanga was by hand on a white fabric using pieces of wooden boards as stamps. Vlisko in the Netherlands also were printing kanga for East Africa from around 1857 to the 1960s when they stopped. Companies like the ABC of the UK was also printing kangas, and kangas were also known to be printed in Switzerland, Japan, India, and now they are most commonly printed in China. It wasn't until the 1900s that the proverbs, sayings, aphorisms, and slogans were added to the kanga. A trader in Mombasa called Kadardina Haji Esak, also known as Abdullah, began to distinguish his kangas with the mark K-H-E, Malia Abdullah. Initially, these sayings were printed in Arabic script, but later on, the Roman letters were added. Like many other forms of artistic expressions, the kanga also makes commentary in the political climate. There are kangas during the Obama era which praise or encourage Obama and show support for him. And there are kangas during political campaign seasons where the different politicians will print their faces and their slogans for women to show support for them. The kanga is a living documentation of co-production and there's evidence of collaboration in the design and the evolution of the cloth. Although produced outside of Africa in some form or other, I would say that the kanga is more connected to the continent 
more so than any other type of printed cloth because of the sayings and the significance of some of the designs. We ascribe value to the kanga not because it is made outside of Africa, but because of the role it plays in our daily lives. This fabric is given to us when we are born and stays with us throughout our lives. And when we die, some of us are wrapped in a kanga as well. I am so glad that you stayed to the end of the video and if you found value in this content, please subscribe and like, comment and share with your friends. You can find our other contents here and here and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!